I'm Kristen. I'm a registered yoga teacher, as well as the founder and CEO of Zen Lab. Meet me where you are right now without holding any judgment to yourself. Get up, move, stretch, and breathe with me. Build mental strength with meditations, improve overall health, lung capacity, and find focus and mental clarity with breath work. Meet me where you are, wherever you are, and enjoy the episode. Welcome back. Today is just a little bit different for me, maybe not for you, but I do not have any talking points in front of me and it's freaking me the fuck out. (laughs) I normally come to this podcast with a meditation script or, you know, I'll use an old YouTube video, yoga flow. But today, I don't have any of that. And there's a reason for that because this idea of authenticity, it's been kind of floating around in my brain and just like ping-ponging off the insides of my skull. And it's just really interesting to me because I am obviously a huge proponent of being your authentic self and really not giving a shit about what people think of you. But the thing is, I do care. (laughs) I care what you think. I care what other people think. And the irony is that I have been in a sales role for the past nine years where I literally read, well, read, past tense, read from a script for nine years. And I was reprimanded for swaying from the script or being someone that they didn't want me to be. And now I, here I am nine years later, and I feel as though I've lost my voice. Even though I've started a company and I'm like actually doing what I want to do as far as a career goes, When it comes to going out into the world and putting myself out there, I have such a hard time letting go of whatever I think I'm supposed to say and just say it. So this idea of authenticity, you know, it's really fascinating because I used to be obsessed with the idea of authenticity. I even wrote a blog called Authenticity. So that was me in 2012. It might have been, no, it would, it would have been 2011. I believe I started the blog before I spent a semester in Italy, Rome, Italy. And I started the travel blog just to like, you know, write about my travels. And I called it authenticity because I was so obsessed with the idea of authenticity. <laughs> and now I'm going to say authenticity. So I went ahead and Googled authenticity travel blog. And the first thing that popped up, like the first Google search that popped up, travel tips, I'm a writer. That's it. That's the title of the blog. And this is blowing my mind because even right now, this was, you know, this was almost 10 years ago. So even right now, I would not consider myself a writer. But I had so much free will and confidence in myself at that moment in my life that I was willing to just label myself as a writer. And I think that's kind of the whole point of the blog that I wrote too, was the fact that, you know, I'm not a writer, but here I am writing blogs. So yes, I am a writer. <laughs> You can call yourself a writer if you want to. It's just words. Even more fascinating, the second blog post that comes up is called Unstuck, Not Like Glue. And I'm just going to read the first part of it because it's just crazy to me that this was me 10 years ago. Ironically enough, my desk job in cubicle land has unstuck me from my stagnant world. I had the notion that if I always moved around, changed friends, changed houses, changed cities, 
that it would provide me with more opportunities and adventures than a desk job could. I had it all wrong. It's frame of mind, not frame of scenery, that's going to provide you with adventure and opportunity. I mean, I'm so smart. (laughs) It's really kind of crazy to read through this blog that I named Authenticity, just really coming up with some really wise ideas. Looking back at myself, it's like a time capsule. But I'm going through some self-reflection right now. I left the corporate world. I'm no longer reading from a script and I can just do whatever the fuck I want. So I'm going to do that. (laughs) So of course I started kind of poking around the internets and found an article about the idea of authenticity. And of course, Brene Brown shows up again with an article by Carly Hawk on October 12, 2016, four questions to foster your authentic self. Brene Brown says, authenticity is daily practice of letting go of who we think we are supposed to be and embracing who we actually are. There's just some really wonderful things about this article that I like, but one thing I wanted to kind of bring up was these four questions for authenticity practice where you wanted to be authentic, but, you know, reflecting upon your past self, you realize that maybe you weren't being authentic. And so here are the four questions that I invite you to ask yourself whenever you feel that you aren't being authentic with your true self. Number one, what am I afraid would happen if I shared my experience right now with this person? Number two, how will I feel if I don't share what I'm thinking and feeling? Number three, if I weren't afraid, what would I most want to say to this person right now? Number four, how can I share this with even more vulnerability? Okay, so here's the thing. I wanted to go on to this article and read through these eight points or eight ways to be true to yourself for you because I think it's really good to know and I'll drop the link to this post in the show notes but I'm not going to read them because it's not my work and I've seriously I've been reading articles and posting information from other people for so long and I just want to step away from that. So this is me giving myself space to just talk off the cuff and talk freely and not have to read from someone else's words. In reality, the truth is I fear a lot of things. I fear failure for my business. I fear inadequacy and I also have a lot of doubt and even And I think this also stems from not necessarily being super authentic with myself all the time is feeling the sense of um, imposter syndrome where whatever I'm doing or saying doesn't feel like me. And now I'm having a little bit of a revelation about this imposter syndrome and just what that actually means to how I'm putting myself out into the world. And so genuinely reflecting on my ability to be myself in my teachings and my, you know, social posts, I suppose, but we all know how hard that can be. (laughs) And creating content and ideas that are true to me. And I think, you know, one of the best ways to do that is journaling. Some of my best ideas come from sitting in silence and opening up a blank page with a pen. And obviously, like, (laughs) I felt that way when I was writing my blog. This unstuck, not like glue blog post that I wrote in 2013, I wrote stuck equals adventure, which I think is just really fascinating because I was really onto something where, you know, maybe not the word stuck is the right word, but I get what I'm trying to say where when you have roots or you have foundation, you have the safety and the stability to root down 
into the earth, but also feel grounded as a human, which the more you feel safe, the more you feel the ability to walk away from that safety, the more stability that you have, the more freedom you feel that you have in your spirit to explore. And I can't remember exactly where I read this. It might have been Esther Perel's book, Mating in Captivity, which is an idea of, you know, children. It starts at a very young age where when children feel more loved and stable in their home, they actually feel more freedom to venture off further from the parents. The more that the parents give them stability and, you know, groundedness, the more that they feel that they have the ability to go out into the world and be themselves because they have that support and that support webbing to catch them if they ever fall. You know, here I'm talking about a job which is providing me with that stability and giving me that ability to explore myself and adventure and travel. I think that, you know, generally finding the balance of that stability and adventure, you know, our true authentic selves is found somewhere in the middle. (laughs) We're not always one thing and we're not always the other. We're not always that grounded, hard, stable foundation. We're not always that floofy explorer that just likes to float around the world. We have to have something in the middle. And our true selves also lies there too. Our true authentic self lies within us, within the balance of stability and exploration and adventure. So I'm just going to end this episode with a mindful breathing exercise. So make your way to a seated posture, comfortable seat. You can be in a chair with the feet on the ground or you can be seated on the ground in a comfortable spot, cross-legged. You can rest your back on a wall or chair for support. Just gently close the eyes, but soften down so there's not any tension. Hands rest wherever they're comfortable. Soften in the brow area, unclench the jaw. Invite your body to relax. Let yourself become curious about your body seated here, the sensations it experiences, the touch, the connection with the floor or the chair. Do your best to relax any areas or tightness or tension and breathe. Tune in to the rhythm of your breath. Feel the natural flow of the breath in and out. No need to do anything or change the breath. Just let it be. Not long or short, just natural. Notice where you feel your breath in your body. Maybe your abdomen, maybe chest or throat nostrils. See if you can feel the sensations of the breath, one breath at a time. When one breath ends, the next breath begins. If 
you're not able to notice the breath in all areas of the body, that's okay. We're more connected to certain areas of the body than others at different times of the day. You might notice that your mind may start to wander. You may start to think about other things. If this happens, it's not a problem. It's very natural. Just try to notice that your mind has wandered. You might even want to say to yourself, thinking or wandering in your head softly. And then gently redirect your attention right back to the breath. Notice the breath. From time to time, you'll get lost in thought. You can say thinking or wandering when you notice these thoughts and then return to your breath. Softly bring your awareness to your body, your whole body seated here. Let yourself relax even more deeply. Here in this moment, offer yourself some appreciation and gratitude for joining me in this practice today. Meet Me Where You Are is a podcast powered by Zen Lab. You can join live online yoga classes with registered yoga teacher Kristen, aka myself. The theme music for this podcast is Where Are We Going by Aaron Kellum. Subscribe to this podcast for future breath practices, meditation, and yoga flows. You can email me at zenlabindy at gmail.com. Bye.